The Arrow One, Canada's first supersonic fighter plane, is ready to fly after five years of work and planning. By it was nearly 60 years ago when the Avro CF-105 Arrow took off for the very first time. It was designed as a long-range interceptor. It would be years before AV Row Canada, then the third largest company in Canada, would get to this moment. But less than a year later, the Avro Arrow, the crown jewel in Canadian aviation, was destroyed. But now a team of scientists believe they found one of the prototypes of the iconic fighter jet at the bottom of Lake Ontario. When they destroyed the, the actual planes, there were six flying uh, versions of, of the Avro. Uh, and then they destroyed the, uh, the machines that made the planes and they burnt most of the files. It was like they were trying to erase a piece of history. We put about 30,000 people out of work, 15,000 directly, another 15,000 in the industries associated with the Arrow. And Canada's third industry at the time, in the day, uh, effectively shut its doors overnight. John Brzezinski is a geologist and CEO of Osisco Mining. He's teamed up with a marine technology team to locate nine test models that were launched into Lake Ontario. More than half a century later, that decision by the Canadian government is still shrouded in mystery. Prime Minister John Diefenbaker insisted it was a financial decision. At the time, the Avro cost about a million dollars to make. I knew that a great industry that had been established would be weakened but it was right to end it. Perhaps most fundamentally, uh, NATO figures that if there's going to be an attack from uh, the, the communist bloc, it's going to happen probably in 1954. When nothing happens in 1954 or 55, uh, politicians and even men in uniform are saying, we've invested an awful lot in defense, and maybe it's time to um, pull the throttle back a little bit on expenditures. The arrow is going to be hugely expensive. Uh, whether all the technologies work or not, whether it can be sold offshore or not, it's simply going to cost the Canadian government and the taxpayers an awful lot of money. This is an aircraft that seemed to have huge potential. Uh, it certainly would have been a, a crowning glory um, for the aerospace industry of the 1950s. It's believed Soviet moles infiltrated the Avro project. There are some questions of uh, security, that perhaps there was a Russian mole within Avro somewhere and this was a good way to um, get all of that uh, information off the street, if you will. Not that it was on the street, so I don't necessarily buy that theory. If the mole was there, the mole knew what he or she wanted to know already. Um, just about the time that the arrow is ready to fly, the Russians launched Sputnik. And it's recognized uh, by 1957-58 that the threat may no longer be uh, a manned air-breathing bomber. It may in fact be an intercontinental ballistic missile. The team has been searching since late July using this high-resolution sonar. Their latest discovery is the most significant to date. The model Avros were three meters long and two meters wide. They were attached to a booster rocket that would shoot them up into the air. So back in the late 1950s, 1957, 1958, they didn't have uh, wind tunnels that we have nowadays. They didn't have computer simulation tools like we have today. So when they wanted to design an aerodynamic uh, aircraft like the Avro Aero, they actually had to do scale model testing. David Shea is with Kraken Sonar, a marine technology company based in Newfoundland. With the help of the Thunderfish Alpha, a high-res underwater sonar, his crew is hoping to find the nine flight models that were launched over Lake Ontario between 1954 and 1957. His crew is searching an eight-kilometer area around Point Petrie in Prince Edward County. While Lake Ontario is the second deepest Great Lake, about 240 meters, the sonar is only searching an area about 20 to 60 meters deep. We tell it where to survey, we push the button, the vehicle dives down underwater, there's no tether, there's no human control, it's battery powered, it's running its own artificial intelligence. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're ready. 
when we identify targets in that, we're sending down our ROV with the camera system on it to classify the targets. Is it a rock? Is it a plane? Is it a booster rocket? Uh, once we identify the targets, we hand them over to the archaeologists and they decide, well, is it worthwhile to recover these objects? Obviously, the models, when we find them, uh, we want to be recovering those, but it's not as simple as just putting a strap on them and hauling them out of the water. They've been sitting on the seabed for 60 years. They've been corroding away. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of strategy that needs to go into how do they safely get them out of the water and keep them intact, and when they get them out of the water, how do they conserve them? Even before discovering one of the prototypes, his crew identified a number of Nike booster rockets used in the Avro Aero program. The booster's location helped the search team close in on an area where they believe other prototypes might be. There are plane wrecks crashed into the lake. There, there are shipwrecks, six or eight shipwrecks that we know of. So all in all, there's somewhere between four and 600 different objects out there, and, and it's really like looking for a needle in a haystack full of needles. They will continue to look for the planes until late September in hopes of retrieving the last remaining pieces of Avro history. While many tried in the past, no one has been as successful as Brzezinski and his team. The Arrow rocket skyward, pushed by American-made turbines to generate twice the power of a Queen Mary. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.